Hello, my name is Dr. Nicole Krum. I'm a board certified forensic pathologist and assistant medical examiner at the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office here in beautiful Detroit, Michigan. This is the second video in a series of videos brought to you by the National Association of Medical Examiners, or NAME, to teach the public about what actually happens in an autopsy. This video is part two, so if you haven't seen part one, the external examination, I recommend you go back and watch that video first, although you can watch this video independent of that one. Warning! In this series, I am going to be talking about death and what happens during a death investigation and autopsy. So if that's not something you want to see or hear about, I'll give you a second to keep scrolling. So to recap, a post-mortem examination, or my main means of determining cause and manner of death, has three components. One, the external examination, which I talked about in my last video. Two, the internal examination, which I will be talking about today. And three, ancillary studies, which are any extra testing that we send to try to help us determine cause and manner of death. This includes things like toxicology, radiology, microbiology, and each one of those will be its own separate, very short little video. Just like the external exam, the internal exam is exactly what it sounds like. It's when we look at the inside of the body. But before we get here, we have to get inside. Once we get the decedent onto the right table, we open the body up using the standard Y incision, which I'm sure many of you have seen in movies or TV shows. Once we get through the skin and subcutaneous tissue, we reflect the skin flaps and then remove the rib cage using either pruning shears, loppers, or bone saws. To get the brain out, we make an incision on the scalp and then reflect the skin and use a bone saw to cut open the skull and pop out the brain. The process of performing an internal examination is extremely labor intensive. Luckily, I have ample help from autopsy technicians and pathology assistants to help me with this process. While Bueller is an excellent anatomic model with swappable internal genitalia, this is not what the inside of a human body actually looks like. I do appreciate the accuracy in terms of overlapping of the organs, but the color of organs is a little bit off, texture definitely off, and your vessels are not color-coded like this. Usually on anatomic models, in order to differentiate between veins, which bring blood back to your heart, and arteries, which take blood away from your heart, arteries are colored red and the veins are painted blue. Once we get into the body, there are several different methods of dissection that we can use to remove the organs and examine them each individually, to look for signs of natural disease or injury. Each of those dissection methods has a fancy name that I'm not going to use because they're named after people, and naming things after people has proven to be really problematic in medicine time and time again. Medicine is moving away from naming things after the people that discovered them and using more descriptive terms. So I'll just be using descriptive terms as well. The first method of dissection isn't used as commonly as the other two. It's what's known as an in situ examination or inside of the body examination. That means that we don't necessarily remove all of the organs, we just visualize them while they're still inside the body. And we might choose to do this if we have specific medical history and we know exactly which organs we want to target to get the most high yield information without using a lot of resources. The next method of dissection I'll talk about is on block dissection. Fun and disturbing fact, all of your organs are connected by connective tissue and you can actually pull them all out if you start from the top remove the trachea, cut the connective tissue down along the backside, and all of the organs will just come out all at once. Once the block is removed, each organ can be individually separated from the block and analyzed. And one of the reasons why this method is chosen is because it's very quick. A autopsy technician or pathology assistant can come around, take out the block, lay it on your station, move on to the next case while you're working on that block, 
They're taking out the next one. As soon as it's out, you're done with your first block and you move on. The next dissection method I'll talk about is organ by organ. And it involves, as the name would imply, going organ by organ and removing each individually instead of all together. A big advantage of the organ by organ method is that if you're working alone, the on block method is a little bit more physically labor intensive. And so the organ by organ method, especially if you're quick at it, is much easier when you're working alone. Once all of the organs have been taken out individually one by one or dissected away from the block in an on block resection, each is analyzed separately. And there are various dissection techniques for each organ, which are outside of the scope of this video, but could be amenable to another short video series. Just as we have specialized procedures for the external examination, depending on the cause and manner of death, we have various specialized internal examination techniques we can use based on the cause and manner of death. Those techniques are outside of the scope of this introductory video. Usually during an internal examination, we'll take a small sample of each organ and save it in formalin, a preserving chemical, and in case we want to go back and look at that tissue under the microscope, which, which I will be talking about in my ancillary studies video on histology slash microscopy. Besides those little pieces of tissue, the remainder of the organs go into a bag and that bag is put back into the body cavity before the body is sewn up. Once we complete our examination, we do not do anything cosmetic. All of that is done by a funeral home or other sort of facility, depending on what next of kin decide. If you'd like to actually watch an on-block dissection, you can find one at autopsypathology.net under the videos tab. It'll take you to a list of videos that are on a YouTube playlist and goes through each part of the dissection. Remember to set your YouTube settings to uh, confirm that you're older than 18 if you try to watch these videos though. Well, there you have it. Part two to this basic introduction to the post-mortem examination, the internal examination. Remember, when we do a postmortem examination, we don't necessarily have to do all three parts to determine cause and manner of death. In many cases, we can just do an external examination. In some cases, we do the external and the internal, but no ancillary studies. And in a full, complete postmortem examination, we will do all three, the internal, the external, and some ancillary studies, which I will be covering in my next series of videos. Thank you for joining me. Once again, I'm Dr. Nicole Kroom, and you can follow me on Instagram at everybody decomposes. Bye.